Hallelujah. He is risen. Okay, he's risen in the front row. Let me try that again. Christ is risen. Okay, he's risen in the back. Let's try upstairs. Jesus Christ is alive. Amen, amen, amen. Welcome to the 11 a.m. service. It's our Easter celebration. And it is so good to see so many lovely faces in the room. If you're here for the first time, you are so welcome. We pray that you'll feel the love and joy of the Lord in this house. I'm going to read quickly from Luke 24, verse 1. Now, on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, certain women came to the tomb bringing spices, but they found the stone rolled away. And then when we go to verse 5, As they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to the angels, Why do you, well, the angels said to the women, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, he is risen. Amen. And so today we are celebrating Jesus Christ, the risen King. Let us stand together in the house of the Lord if we can. Before we even go into the place of praise and singing and dancing just lift your voice and give the lord a praise for he is resurrected for he is alive for he is risen for he is not dead jesus christ son of the living god is alive and as we go into the place of praise and worship this day we give him all the glory and all the honor in jesus name amen amen Amen.
you're thirsty, come to the wheel that never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Yeah, yeah. Come all you sinners, come find his mercy. Come to the table, he will satisfy. Taste of his goodness, find what you're looking for. Come on, let's sing that again. Come, go. Come all you weary, come all you thirsty. Come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Yeah, yeah. Come all you sinners, come find his mercy. Come to the table, he will satisfy. Taste of his goodness, find what you're looking for.
Day and night. Day and night. Night and day. Let worship arise. Revelation 4 verse 11 says, They cry, holy, holy, holy. Is the Lord Almighty day and night, day and night. The angels cry holy. The elders bow down before him. For he's worthy of praise. Worthy of praise. You're worthy of praise. Day and night, Lord, we worship you. Night and day we lift your name on high. Why? Because you're worthy. Why? Because all of the glory belongs to you. Why? You deserve it, Lord. Why? Because you first loved us. Helps us to love you. How can we not cry out that you're worthy of it all? All of what? All of going to the cross. All of being beaten and scourged. An indescribable figure on the cross. You who were without sin. Paid the price for us. You died so we would live. You replaced our sins. With your glory. Every shame you took that day on the cross. Every blame you took that day on the cross, we cry out, you're worthy. And then you went down to hell. <laughs> you conquered death, the grave. And on that third day, Jesus, you rose. You had conquered. You had paid the price for all of our sins. Jesus, you rose victorious. Jesus, you rose, the resurrected one. Jesus, you paid the price. And we can come to you. That's why we cry. We sing, worthy are you, Lord, that there is none like you. You paid the price for us. You made the way. You made the way that we could come, we could bow, be received into your kingdom, belong to you, be forgiven, be set free. Thank you so much, Lord, this morning. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. You don't judge us. You don't condemn us. You came for love, but that the world through him might be saved. We're saved by your love. We're saved by your love. We're saved by your love this morning, Lord. So indeed we cry worthy, 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 worthy. The lamb that was slain, we praise and bless your holy name today. And with thankfulness, we really do worship you in your precious name. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you so much to the worship team. Aren't they not marvelous? And as you take your seats in here, I was looking at the many different faces, the many different colors of skin, the many different ages of people in here, and how the Lord's heart must be full of joy this morning, that we've gathered together just to lift up his name, just to remember what he's done, and to worship him. How much this morning we're lifting his heart and making him glad that we're here together for him. Amen. So another big welcome to our 11 o'clock service. 
You're so welcome for those of you who are joining us online at home. I always say this, you're part of our family, whether you're here in the building or not, and we want you to sense and feel the presence of God right there in your home, just as much as we're doing here in the service. And thank you all, so many of you, for coming out today. A big hello to those of you in our lower hall as well. Just enjoy the presence of God today. Why don't I ask Lilies and Corinne to come and let us know what's going on over the next few days. Thank you, Pastor Claudette. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. He has truly risen. Jesus, we just thank you. We just honor you this morning. And as Pastor Claude F. said, it's time for us to just tell you about some of the things that are happening in the life of the church. But before we do that, let's just think about this weekend. This weekend was awesome. We had Good Friday service. Was anybody here for Good Friday? Yeah. Absolutely awesome. And then how about Saturday, yesterday, 1 p.m. on YouTube? KT Worship, KT presented a film about the silence. If you did not get the chance to watch that, feel free to go on YouTube, KT Church, and just look at the silence. The silence became a movement. Amen, amen. And so today we get to celebrate Resurrection Sunday together. And we have obviously have the services happening now, but also we want to really invite you back at 6 p.m., bring as many people as you can. We're going to have a fantastic worship celebration Easter revival service. Anyone excited? Anyone excited? Yeah, it's going to be an amazing time of worship, really extended time of worship where you can just get a chance to pour your heart out before the Lord. Um, and our music director, Jordan Bakila, is going to bring a short word at that service. So do mobilize for that. Do come out tonight. It's going to be absolutely awesome. Amen. We also have the April Revival Times magazine out. So that's the one I'm holding here. If you haven't received one yet, please feel free to put your hand up and our team will pass you one. We also have them online. So if you would like to receive your monthly Revival Times online, feel free to give us your details at reception. We'll use them simply to connect you to what is going on. Get your phones, get your diaries, get writing what's going to be happening so you don't miss anything. Amen. Amen. And we just want to appeal to anybody here who is a new Christian or somebody who wants to find out more about the Christian faith. We run a course called the Christian Essentials course. It's a three-week course. It's on Tuesday evenings and it begins this Tuesday, next Tuesday, the 9th of April. So not this Tuesday coming, but the next Tuesday, the 9th of April is our first lesson. And we have a wonderful number of topics that we include. We talk about who is Jesus. We talk about what is salvation. We talk about prayer, the Bible, church, baptism, baptism in the spirit. It's a fantastic course. And it's a really great way if you are new to the faith or if you're new to the church or if you haven't yet been baptized, it's a great foundational course to go on just to kind of establish all your basics and then move forward to baptism if you so choose. Just to let you know, our next baptism date is Sunday the 28th of April. And so if you would like to be baptized or you know somebody who would want to be baptized on that date, please encourage them. You can sign up on the QR code behind me or you can um, sign up in reception as well if anybody wants to join us for the Christian Essentials starting Tuesday the 9th of April. And it's a free course, so please do come along and please encourage many others to join. Awesome. As you can see, there was a QR code at the back behind us, so feel free to scan that um, so you can be able to fill out the details on your phone, and then we will be in touch. It's only three weeks, but it's three life-changing weeks, as some people in the room here have experienced. We also have IBIOL and Regents having a module which is called the Spirit Empowered Disciples. What's happening with that, Corinne? Well, it's an amazing course, five-week course, and... There have been a number of these courses that have been happening throughout the year. So this is another five-week amazing course. Some of the actual details of it are who is the Holy Spirit. You're going to focus on salvation, transformation. You're going to learn about the gifts of the Spirit. You're going to learn about spiritual warfare. 
So I think for every single Christian here, Spirit Empowered Disciples is a course that would really benefit you if you're available. Tuesdays, again, it's at the same time as the Christian Essentials, um, but it's held in a different room. And the price is £75. So if you would like to join that, please, again, sign up through the registration. And we'll see you there. Awesome. Now, before we finish, there is one more event coming up this month. Do you want to know about it? Uh, some people do. Who wants to know about it? Who wants it? to know Who about it? Who wants to know about it? Okay, Come on. Okay, okay. <laughs> you know, we need to make sure you know. Watoto Children's Choir. <laughs> it is absolutely. They are an awesome um, group of children from Uganda, which is in East Africa. Any East Africans in the house? Woo -hoo! Any Kenyans, Tanzania, Uganda? Okay, okay, we'll work on the they're, cheers. They're out there, they're out but there. But we're going to have an amazing time on Friday the 12th of April. Um, it is absolutely free. You are welcome to invite friends, family, neighbors, whoever you meet on the streets, tell them to come on in. But let's watch this video to really get us prepared for this. Oh, 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 guys, let down me do it. Wow, wow. So do mobilize for that. Friday the 12th of April at 7 p.m. Please do come out. It is a free concert. So do, yeah, encourage as many people as you can to come out to that. So did you like all the dance in that video? Well, we have a fantastic dancer now who's coming to grace us with a wonderful performance, and her name is Nicole. Let's welcome Nicole to the stage today. We say that these things they're still cancer and so much disease. What shall we say to these things? So much hurting and broken esteem. If you gotta be for me, who can be against me? If God is with me, whom shall I fear? If no one knows me, still his heart adores me. I am safe. It's getting hard to believe And what shall we say to these things So many people hurt it With broken esteem So many questions But still If God be for me, who can be against me? If God is with me, with whom, me whom shall I fear? If no one knows me, 
sing that. Say, if you are for me, if you Wasn't that beautiful? Thank you so much, Nicole. And isn't it wonderful to know that we don't just speak and we don't just sing, but we worship with everything we have and everything we are. And that's why it's so beautiful to see something creative, uh, such as dance, being a powerful expression of worship to the Lord. As mentioned earlier, those of you who watched the short film yesterday, you would have seen a dance there. That was also so powerful. So really, a big thank you. At this time, I'd like to invite Teresa to please come to the platform. She's going to share a testimony. She's got that look on her face like, oh, I've got my own mic. Teresa, you're very well known. Come stand right next to me. Come on, right here. Come on. And Teresa serves, for those of you who don't know, she's part of our stewarding team and helps with everything and anything. But on the 6th of January, you were in a church service elsewhere and you saw a few friends, didn't you? Yeah. So what happened? Yes, did, yeah. yeah, what happened? Um, happened as uh, David, Anita, or whatever, they called me. I was on, on uh, to the first floor. Yeah. Emmanuel Church, the stairs is all marble stone. Oh, so and the, the, very the big church was marble, and you so, were looking yeah, at I your was, friend. Yeah. I was looking at your friend, and uh, I invited my daughter. I said to her, oh, my daughter's coming. But as I walking back, I had another friend who invited me. As I walk back, I started going forward. I didn't see the stairs. Mm. I'm only slided, but I didn't feel any pain at all. No. It was like I was sliding on the water or pillow. So, so you actually fell, but you didn't really feel to um, put out by it. It was almost no, like you slid. No, yeah. the only thing I remember... Uh, people, they were their pastors, everything. They saw I only cried, Jesus! Yeah, <laughs> so they began to pray for you as, as no, they saw before, that you No, before, as soon as I felt, I, ah. I, I, I felt like I was flying, yeah. I was only cried, Jesus! <laughs> That's what me. you did as she was flying. Yeah. So, but after that, you had to have some medical examinations. Were you in pain? Yeah, yeah. Well, from 6th of Jan uh, January, they called me uh, February, the hospital emergency, but that day, the day, day after, I was so bad in pain. My yes. daughter said, Mom, Mom, we'll let me take you to uh, ENA. I said, No, the devil is a liar. Uh, everything is going to be okay. But my legs, they were so pub and they're dark. So you had swollen legs, they were also dark. dark so you yeah. decided to go to A&E? Yes, okay. and my daughter called a cab. I said, I'm going to call the ambulance. I said, No, no ambulance, I'm not dying. I'm, al I'm alive. <laughs> and <laughs> so what happened when you got to A&E? What uh, did they do? And um, they done all the tests. As I explained, the doctors, they came, they called another one, and they said, now they started doing so many tests. At least I said, what is this? They said, if you had a bad fall. You can have a head injury. You can have or any internal... I don't know really you, and uh, I think that Christian, they said, you should praise God. Oh, nice. Praise Jesus for <laughs> so that. Even there in the hospital, yeah. they were mm. encouraging you to praise God. But actually, the scan showed that something and was the torn. Scan, after all day, uh, the daughters came and they said, Can I talk to you? I have something to talk to you. I had a friend and my daughter. We, can, I, can I talk in front of uh, everyone who's yeah. this? I said, My daughter. And they said, Oh, I. Can I, may I speak? Yes. I have something really to tell you. I said, uh, okay. 
No, 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 I don't want you to talk to anyone. I want to listen, only yes. you and me. He said, yeah. okay, took me to the other room. Yeah. And suddenly my daughter came in and said, no, no, I want to, I want to hear because she's my, okay. she's my mom. And yeah, my so she joined you. Yeah. And what, what did the doctor tell you? And the doctor said, uh, a part of uh, uh, the heart uh, uh, aorta. Yes, yeah, so there's a two, uh, uh, valve a in the heart, so it's called the aorta. Uh -huh, aorta. And it a had torn from, from the fall. From the fall. And right. what else? And after I said, this is uh, oh, something is too small, no, there's no important. But the, cons the, the consultant will call you. But there's something uh, really, really serious. I said, what's happened? And they said, we found a big mass in your liver. Mm -hmm. So they but, saw something that looked like a massive tumor, mm -hmm. a mass in her liver. Yeah. And at that point, they began a series of extensive tests on you. Yes. Does that include a biopsy? Biopsy. I, okay. took, I had it two weeks. On the top of that, I have a freedom pass because I'm over 60. But anyway, <laughs> the devil... I lo uh, they only received the cancel the travel. I said, oh my God, I have no money. On. And the, the, tra the travel is so expensive. And my daughter gave him a pay, the 20 pounds, the Oster card. And they have been two weeks in every day. You were going the to hospital. the hospital for tests. But, uh, um, yeah. As soon as uh, he told me that, I came here on Wednesday. But I want to tell Pastor Claudette to pray for me. Yeah. Uh, but she wasn't here. I called the pastor Scott, uh, Scott, yeah. and I said, Pastor Scott, I have a problem again. Yeah. And, <laughs> and she's had a number of <laughs> healings, you know, in her life in this church. So you asked for prayer, basically, because we want to yeah. get to the power of the testimony now. You and asked for uh, prayer from Pastor Scott, uh, from me. Yeah. We were praying for you yeah. in Pastoral Care, Debbie, Kofi. Intercessors were praying. Yeah. Cell groups were praying. But it Cell wasn't public. Like we were family. just praying. Yes. And, and one of the prayers and, uh, we prayed, yes. let me just say that for and you. The mass would shrink and disappear and they would find nothing. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so on the 2nd of March, you were due to go back for the results of the test, but what happened? Yeah, they, they, uh, I didn't receive any call, but I received a call later on saying I missed the appointment, the consultant. So she, the consultant. Missed, she missed her appointment, you know. And uh, I was so frightened, even I was with my friend Dina, and they would say, we're going there. We said, no, don't worry, they will call back. But if it be, no, it's not important, otherwise they would call back again. And they, I went to there next day, the book for 25th of, of March. March yeah. So on the 25th of March, we've been waiting a number of weeks. Yes. And you went back for the results of the I mass did, they I, saw yeah, I on your go, liver. I didn't go. Early morning, the same day, 9.30, the consultant called me. He said, a uh, professor, whatever, whatever, pie. And... Uh, <laughs> We should, uh, you know, you have appointment with us, you come to see us today. Yeah. I said, yes, I want 30. And they said, look, it's no point to miss, to waste your time. So you didn't go to the hospital? No, I didn't. Why was there no point in wasting your time? What did they find? No, I don't know. They made appointment, but after they saw all, they said for me not to waste my time to go there. Why? What did they see? Because... The big mass they saw, the That's result is not the, what they were expecting to take me straight away to theater. Because to originally they were going to do surgery. Yeah, beca uh, because I said, why? They said, because what we saw is not there anymore. There is. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty-two millimeters, a minuscule dot. Twenty-two millimeters is what they now saw, saw in the place of a mass on the liver. Massive, uh, think of the liver. What would you say? Who healed you? Jesus. Who healed you? Jesus. Who healed you? Jesus. Many of you will know, Teresa has had testimony after testimony of God's healing power on her life. 
But this is special to share today yeah. on Resurrection Sunday that we can declare our God is living. Yeah. Our Life. God hears and answers prayer. Amen. And we're going to hold on Amen. and hold on and trust him to heal all our diseases. Amen. God bless you, Teresa. Amen. Amen. Thank you for sharing. Take care. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. That is the reason he went to the cross. The Bible says he was bruised for our iniquities. By his stripes, the punishment he received, we're healed. We need to keep believing that God will heal all of our diseases. A fantastic testimony. Thank you so much. We're going to continue our worship now with the Lord. And if you're a visitor here today, we just want to explain to you that we also worship the Lord in our giving. The stewards will come around if you need an envelope to give today. Um, or you may want to give online on your mobile apps, etc. And for those of you at home, there'll be a QR code that comes up on the screen and instructions on how you can give online. Why is this part of our worship? As the scripture I started with this morning said, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn it. But the point is God sent his son. He gave his son for us. He paid a price and gave the best gift that could ever be given. God the Father gave his son Jesus Christ to give his life for us. So when we're giving today, it is a small thing that we could do something not in the same measure as he gives. We can't outgive him. We can't thank him enough, so we have to keep thanking him every day. As we give today, let me invite the worship team back to the platform. As we give today, let us remember that all we're doing is saying thank you for your gift of eternal life. Thank you that you have saved me, that you have set me free. It is the greatest gift that we could ever be given. So we will just do something to say thank you for giving. And so the worship team will come to us shortly. And when you're ready, you've prepared what you would like to give today, then please join us. Let me pray. Father, we thank you once again and we acknowledge the incredible gift of eternal life that you've given us through your son, Jesus Christ, and his sacrifice. We can't give back what was given for us and to us. But we can give to say thank you. We can give to say we worship you and you alone. So bless each hand as they give something into your work today. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen.
for the cross. He said, it is finished. He is risen. The tomb is empty. He's no longer there. Let's give God some praise in the house. He is risen. Christ is alive. 
Wow. Unequivocally, those six words capture the strongest and the greatest statement of life, hope, love, and promise for humanity, for you and for me. And this morning, we cannot ignore the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Human history forever changed in the name of Jesus Christ. And I anticipate for most of us here that our lives have also been permanently changed by this truth and this reality. We cannot lose sight of both the power and the potential that those six words, He is risen, Christ is alive, hold for humanity and the world at large. They hold phenomenal power for those of us that are believers, but they also hold phenomenal potential for those of us that have not yet got to that point. So what does Resurrection Sunday mean to us? The culture will tell you it's about the Easter bunnies and the chocolate eggs in their continued desire with consummate ease to continue reducing each Easter to some cultural nonsense that does not reflect the enormity of what Jesus accomplished and achieved for humanity. Because Jesus died and rose again, we have hope. Because consider for just a moment if he had died but not rose again. In the place of hope, there would be hopelessness. And yet one of the most powerful spiritual kingdom principles that we can lay hold of this afternoon is the power of hope. We all need it. Everyone needs to retain hope in something or someone. And so I have only really one question for us this afternoon. In whom does your hope lie in. Our hope should lie in God. And as faithful followers of Jesus Christ, we cannot allow the spiritual significance of this day to be redefined or recalibrated to the standard of the world. Make no mistake, Jesus went willingly, faithfully, and obediently to the cross of Calvary and paid the highest price for our sins. And His subsequent resurrection guarantees us fullness of life everlasting life, victory over death. Jesus died so that we would not have to experience eternal death. He rose so that we could experience eternal life. And each and every one of us today have to arrive at that point and place in our lives where we accept without reservation that we are all sinners in need of a Savior. Salvation has a name, and the name is Jesus. But do you find yourself here this afternoon where your hope has been damaged, diluted, disfigured in some way? Perhaps you're here struggling simply to hold your life together. Life has been difficult, challenging. Hope has evaporated. You find yourself wandering through the issues of life and all its inevitable challenges. Maybe you hope that you would have been married by this time. Maybe you hoped that you would have been further along in your career path. Maybe you hoped that you had bought your first home, had your first child. I don't know. But when those things don't happen, hope can recede. We read in probably the best known portion of Scripture on love, 1 Corinthians 13, the last verse declares, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love, and we use that portion of Scripture regularly in wedding services. But it's that middle word that I find that we often overlook and omit from our lives. We're very confident about our faith, our confidence in God. We know and have been beautiful recipients of God's lavish love for us. But hope sometimes can be difficult. Paul declares in Romans 15 verse 13, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Hope dares to believe. It enriches your spirit. It gives you a confident expectation of good. But hope is only as strong as its source. That is why our hope cannot reside in our job, in our salaries, in our families, in our friends, in our position in society. Those things will let you down. Our hope must be exclusively in Jesus. 
And so today, we're going to take some time to go through a story of two people in the Bible who seemingly had lost all hope. They had hope, but that hope had disintegrated. So if you have your Bibles, why don't you turn with me to Luke's Gospel, chapter 24. The first 12 verses capture the account from Luke on the resurrection, but it's actually verses 13 to 24 that we're going to spend some time in this afternoon. So Luke 13, uh, 24, verses 13 to 24. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked alongside them. But they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these three days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. And we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is now the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see Jesus. And today I want to address and speak to, I believe, three uh, groups of people that may be here in the church service. You may be interlinked, so you may be in more than one of these three groups. The first group is that God gives hope to regular people. Amen? Amen. Jesus appears here to two pretty ordinary, regular, normal people. In fact, they are so normal, one of them doesn't even get a name. Wow. Scholars and theologians continue to debate and discuss about the actual identity of these two people. We know one is called Cleopas. We can see the etymology would tell you if you read uh, John 19, verse 25, you see an, a very similar variation without the E of the same name. Scholars are unsure whether it's the same person or two different people. What we do capture, though, is that they are two ordinary people just going on a walk. And I believe this morning that every single one of us can retain fresh hope that the God who flung stars into space, the God who knows the end from the beginning, knows each and every one of us and is interested in every one of our lives. There is hope for the regular person here today. But now take a moment. I know we're all on a journey to be more like Jesus, amen? That's the destination. But imagine being Jesus. You've just been resurrected. Where would you go? What would you do? Who would you see? There would be many of us saying, well, Caesar considered himself a little bit of a god. I would go and have a conversation with him. And I'm sure a picture would paint a thousand words if you saw Jesus walking up to Caesar. Maybe, obviously, a second option would be Pontius Pilate. But Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene, not a top-tier disciple. She was present at the cross. She was first at the empty tomb. And now we have Jesus intentionally choosing to interact with these two individuals. Cleopas is mentioned, and this is the only time that they appear in the Scriptures. And they don't even recognize that that is their risen Lord and Savior. Now, I know many of you know, I don't know how and I don't know why, I seem to have a way of meeting famous people all the time. And my wife had mentioned to me the other week, she said, honey, you haven't met anybody famous recently. And I thought about that for a minute, and I was like, do you know she's right? 
And as a recently married man, I've learned my wife is always right. Amen? Any married man here, you'll be able to testify and verify. And as I was finishing my sermon yesterday, we were going to see some friends in the afternoon, and it was a nice sunny day, so we decided to walk. And God gave me a story that would fit this story. <laughs> we're walking down a particular road, and just up here, 40, 50 yards on the left, an amazing, internationally recognized couple. I won't give you their names, but you would know them. She's a, an actress, he's a musician. I dithered, do I, don't I? Yeah, hey, would I mind? Would it be okay to get a picture? She had jumped in the car, I got a picture with him. If you wanna know who it is, see me later. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't Jesus. <laughs> but the bottom line is, even in a moment, just walking down a road, Nothing happening, you can spot a celebrity 50, 60 yards away. And yet, we're believers in Jesus Christ, seemingly walking with him. Sometimes we can miss him. Do you ever find that in your life? Jesus is longing to speak to us. He's longing to encounter us. And we are walking with him, but we don't always recognize that he's actually there. And he's actually with us. And that's the reality for these two people here in the story. They didn't know that they were walking with Jesus. And I can't get my head around that. That we can spot and see anything in everyone. But sometimes, even in our own lives, if we go below the surface, we find ourselves guilty of missing Jesus. Carrie Job, the wonderful worship leader, uh, wrote uh, these words from one of her acclaimed worship songs that declares, let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. And I believe that there is hope for each and every one of us here today to become more aware of the presence and the resurrection power of Jesus in and through our ordinary lives. We are maybe ordinary people, but we serve an extraordinary God who can do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond all that we can possibly ask or imagine. What about the last verse of Psalm 121 declares, the Lord will watch over you in your coming and going both now and forevermore. He is Emmanuel, God with us. He promises never to leave or forsake us. He is consistent and perfect in all of his ways. Psalm 46, verse 1, God is our refuge and our strength, our very present help in times of need. What about Zephaniah 3, 17? The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will extol over you with loud singing. What about Isaiah 41, 10? Fear not. For I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. In the name of Jesus Christ, there is hope for the regular person. And our journey with Jesus from this moment he was resurrected to eternity is forever guarded and guided by the power of our Heavenly Father. He is with us in every valley experience, every mountaintop, in all the stuff that happens in the middle. Think about Daniel thrown into the lion's den. God was with him, amen? amen? And he went from the pit to the palace in just a few days. What about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? God joined them in the fire. He was the fourth man in the fire. That is a word for some of us in the house of the Lord today. God is not just going to redeem you from your situation. He's going to join you in the middle of your trauma, in the middle of your trouble, and He's going to lead you, and He's going to guide you out for the glory of God. He is with you in Jesus' name. Joseph and Potiphar's wife, Genesis 39, seven times. The Word of God declares in that chapter, and the Lord was with Joseph. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with this church. The Lord is with Kensington Temple, London City Church, in the name of Jesus Christ. And we have gone through tough terrain. We have navigated a significant season, troubling times, a chaotic corridor of time. But I'm here to tell you, continue to be faithful and fruitful to the call of God over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Because Isaiah 43, verse 2, stands strong. 
when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burnt, and the flames will not consume you. In the name of Jesus, that is a really good place to give God some praise in the house of the Lord. He is with you in every season, in every moment. Hope dares to believe that tomorrow offers more than today. It trusts confidently in a better future. It's enriched, it's encouraged by previous victories and breakthroughs. It is never troubled or terrified by the enemy. Hope has a compass that perpetually points forward. And I believe that we need to do that. The cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back, no turning back. It doesn't involve itself with irrelevant irritations that have no authority and no autonomy over your life. But there is one problem with the two people that Jesus is now appearing to. They're walking, maybe wandering, but they're going in the wrong direction until they meet Jesus. Has anyone been there? Can anyone testify? Can I get a witness in the house of the Lord? At some point, some point, we were all going in the wrong direction until we found Jesus. And then we turned and we repented and we found forgiveness of sins and now we walk in the right direction. Everything changed because of the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. And you know you never head in the wrong direction when Christ is at the wheel of your life. The second group of people I want to take a moment to speak to today is I want to instill hope for the hurting people. Maybe you're here today and you are hurting. Life has battered and bruised you. You've crashed from one problem to another, pain seemingly giving way to yet more pain. You may even have been hurt by church. Perhaps the church has let you down. Jesus has never let you down. Don't put onto Jesus what man has done. Maybe you feel abandoned. You feel overlooked, marginalized, irrelevant, maybe even unwanted. And I believe there's three words in that portion of scripture that we read. Luke 24, 13 through 24, right in the middle. It's right at the start of verse 21. Three key words that I believe will be able to transform anyone in this place that is hurting. It says very clearly, we had hoped. Past tense. Their hope had seemingly vanished, just like Jesus. Their hope had gone. They were being honest, direct, transparent. They were seemingly so anguished and pained at placing their hope in this Jesus and that that hope had seemingly not been rewarded. At least that's what they thought in their mind, but it was not true. But you know, the tragedy is they responded to that hurt. They moved away from the cross. They moved in the opposite direction. They were committed to somehow putting as much distance between themselves and the cross in some feeble, faint hope that their pain, their hurt, would somehow be subdued and soothed if they just got as far away as possible. Realistically, they should have gone back to Galilee as Jesus had commanded them, or certainly stayed in Jerusalem. They seemingly did neither. And can I tell you, if you're here in the house of the Lord today, Jesus wants to heal you from every emotional hurt, every mental scar, anything that is hampering and hindering you walking in the fullness of the resurrection power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But do not ascribe to Jesus what man or structures, denominations, or anything else may have done to you. Jesus has never failed you. 
Do you know how I know? Never failed me. And he doesn't love me more than he loves you. So if he hasn't failed me, I know by any shadow of a doubt, he has not failed you. So don't look at Jesus and be disappointed. Don't look at Jesus and have had hoped. Retain your hope. Retain your hope. What a tragedy that that could happen. You are his son, his daughter, in whom he is well pleased. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are created in his image and likeness. Man may have failed you and caused you great pain, but hear me clearly. Do not give up on Jesus because he did not give up on you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus finished his race. He fulfilled his purpose. He achieved everything that his father called him to in spite of his own rejection, betrayal, anguish, pain, heartache, and suffering. Romans 8, verses 31 to 38. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who shall be against us? He did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all of us. How will he not also graciously give us all things? Who then shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is there to condemn? Jesus Christ is the one who died. More than that, he was the one raised to life, who is at the right hand of the Father, who is indeed interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things you are more than a conqueror in Jesus Christ. Amen. Come on, people of God, give God some praise. You are more than a conqueror because of the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. No angels, no rulers, no things present or to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nothing in all creation will ever separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. That is a word for the hurting. The enemy is under your feet. Every scheme, every plan of man broken and destroyed over your life. If you want healing, go to the great healer, the great physician. No more pity parties. No more abdicating our authority in Christ. No more listening to the lies of the enemy. No more fear. No more failure. Resurrection power is our portion in the name of Jesus Christ. We've got to transform our thinking. We've got to move into the divine call of God over our lives and find irreversible healing for all of our hurts, which means we need to do the opposite of what these two men did. We need to move to the cross, not away from it, that is where you find your healing. That is where you find your deliverance. That is where your breakthrough is. That is where your victory is. And I believe because of the hope of the risen Christ, every mess will become a message. Every test will become a testimony. Place your hope where your hope has been found. Not in man, not in church, not in the world. They will all fail you. Place it in the risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Place your hope in his infallible word. His word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Place your word over every promise in scripture that is yes and amen for those in Jesus Christ. Some of us that are hurting in here, we need to dare to dream again. We need to pick up our cross and follow Jesus all the days of our lives and not allow the greatest hurt to dictate and determine your destiny in Jesus. Your destiny in Jesus is secure because of the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. Amen. And the third group of people, lost people. Have you ever been genuinely lost? Now, I don't want any married men, I don't want any thinking about the time you're sitting in the car with the wife and she's offering directions. <laughs> Amen? I want to get out of here alive. <laughs> but even when we use the most accurate of maps, they get lost, we take a wrong turn. We get moments in our lives where we just get lost. And the worst part is often you don't actually know you're lost until you get found. 
because there's no alarms, no sirens, no danger signs. There's nothing. You're just carrying on with your life. And maybe you're here today because it is Easter. And thank God that you are here. If you're new here in Kensington Temple this morning, we want you to know that we love you. You are precious and priceless to Jesus. And we care about your life. Please do not leave this building without speaking to anyone on our welcome team, any of the pastors, any of the leaders, any of the staff. We care about you. We're delighted you're here. And you may have heard the worship and wandered in. Can I tell you, you're not lost. You're in the house of the Lord on Resurrection Sunday, hearing the Word of God. You don't know it yet. You just got found. You're about to get found in Jesus' name. Nothing takes God by accident. Consider these two men walking in the wrong direction. They didn't know any better. And the likelihood is it's the same true for you and I today. And yet in just one beautiful encounter, their lives changed forever and for the better. Jesus conquered death, hell, sin, and the grave, was nailed to that bloody, rugged cross at Calvary so that you and I could walk in right relationship with him and the Father, have access to all of that. And you, if you're lost here today, you have an opportunity to move from death to life. Amen? From darkness into light, from lies into truth, from bondage into freedom. Stop me when there's something that's applicable to you. Amen? God is good. He is faithful. What is most comforting to those of us here that may feel lost? Just like Jesus with these two men, he's not given up on you. He didn't give up on these men, and he's not going to give up on you. He never will. But you know what was heartbreaking in that portion of Scripture? was they said this happened three days before. So the totality of their hope in Jesus was barely three days. And I wonder for some of us here, maybe you've drifted away from God. Maybe you've never heard of Jesus. Where is your hope? Has your hope evaporated in just a few days because God seemingly failed to turn up? God didn't break through. God hasn't answered. But you know, all the way through Scripture, in both the Old Testament and the New Testament, you see so consistently that God speaks in threes. And yet these two people, in their state of being lost and losing hope, had forgotten what Jesus said. Romans 15, verse 4. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through the endurance taught in the Scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. Hope. It's a powerful force. An English uh, born but Canadian raised theologian, J.I. Packer, recently went to be with the Lord a few years ago, defines hope as follows. He starts by saying, optimism is a wish without warrant. Christian hope is a certainty, guaranteed by God himself. Optimism reflects ignorance as to whether good things will ever actually come. Christian hope expresses knowledge that every day of his life and every moment beyond it, the believer can say with truth on the basis of God's own commitment that the best is still yet to come. And I believe whether you're someone who is lost currently, someone who is hurting, or you feel overlooked, you feel just like a regular person, the best is still yet to come in your life. In Jesus' name, amen. Why? Because everything that was dead in your life is now alive in Jesus because of the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. Hope for humanity. Hope is all the way through the Scriptures, arguably nowhere more poignant and profound than the verses that we've just read. And I believe God wants to restore our hope today. Hope for a healthy, wholesome future filled with His resurrection power. And I want to leave you with a quote 
from an American author called Lee Strobel. He wrote a book called The Case for Christ in the late 90s, became a film about 10 or 15 years ago. He states the following. The resurrection is the supreme vindication of Jesus' divine identity and his inspired teaching. It is proof of his triumph over sin and death. It is the foreshadowing of the resurrection of his followers. It is the basis of Christian hope. It is the miracle of all miracles. And I want to give us an opportunity this afternoon to respond. And so maybe you want to take a moment to maybe bow your head and close your eyes. And I'm going to work backwards from my three points. Maybe you're lost in this place this morning. You have no idea about this resurrection power. I'm here to tell you Jesus loves you. He is the way the truth, and the life. And you may have explored and examined other religions, other faith groups, but I'm here to tell you unequivocally, it is only our God that is still alive, still doing miracles, and he wants to encounter you. He wants you to experience his relentless, lavish love for you. And you don't need to perform. You don't need to appease anything or anyone. It just requires an open and willing heart that recognizes Jesus Christ is Lord, that he paid for my sins when he went to the cross, that he lived with the sole purpose of dying so that we could walk in freedom, freedom from everything, from shame, from rejection, from habits, and sin, strongholds over our lives. And I want to take a moment in this place. If you are lost, I want to tell you you're in the right place you can be found in the next few precious minutes that follow but it requires a moment of bravery and boldness maybe even being blunt like these two men were with Jesus it requires you to respond publicly Jesus died on a hillside naked in front of his own mother and he resurrected and he's alive right now seated at the right hand of the Father, making prayer and intercession for you. I once was lost, but now I'm found. The words from Amazing Grace. And so if you're in this place and you want to make Jesus Christ Lord of your life, I would be hugely honored if you would take a moment and just slip your hand up all over this place. We have people from our welcome team that would love to speak with you afterwards, connect with you, and just help you understand the decision that you've made, help you find your place with us here at KT in the family of God, knowing that you truly are priceless and precious to Jesus. So if there's anyone here, just take a moment, lift your hand. second group of people are those that have been hurt. Move towards the cross, not away from it. Take your troubles and your traumas to Jesus. You have ready access to the Father. God's word in Hebrews 4 is so clear. Let us walk right up to him, accept the mercy, receive the help that he is so willing to give. And I implore you, don't put at the feet of Jesus what man or this world may have done to you. He's never failed you. He's never hurt you. He's never let you down. And I believe that forgiveness needs to flow in this place. Healing needs to come into every heart and mind emotionally, mentally, relationally, maybe even physically. But if you are hurting in the house of the Lord today, I want to tell you that there is hope for you because of the resurrection power of Jesus. You don't need to carry that hurt anymore. 
Don't let that hurt form part of your identity. Don't let it steal your joy. Don't let it rob you of your destiny in Jesus Christ. Receive your healing. Turn back. Go to the foot of the cross. Leave it all there. And you will see the great healer bring healing and deliverance and victory into every part of your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I guess the, the last group is for all of us. There are no superstars in the kingdom of God. There is just one risen Lord and Savior, and his name is Jesus. And our goal is to make him famous, not ourselves. But sometimes we can feel ignored, overlooked, unwanted, maybe even abandoned. And we feel that our contribution to church, to ministry, because it may not take place on a platform, is somehow irrelevant, not valued, not honored. Can I tell you, Jesus sees. God sees your heart. God sees your labor of love for him, the body of Christ. God sees your desire to serve him faithfully. And he wants you to know that the world may not see you as a celebrity or a superstar, but he sees you as, your, as his son, as his daughter, in whom he is well pleased with. You are made in his image and likeness. He's perfect in all of his ways towards you. And so I believe that we need to remind ourselves today that the world may not value us, but we are valuable to the one who created the world, who lives outside of the world, who created the heavens and the earth, the land and the sea, the God who flung stars into space, had his hands nailed to that cross. That God recognizes you. That God runs up to you. That God would take a selfie with you. He loves you. And he loves you with an everlasting love. Not based on your popularity. Not based on what you can do or where you are or what your influence is. It's based on who you are in Jesus. The greatest title, the greatest role that could ever be ascribed, you or I, is not our, our job description or our, our influence in the world. It is that we are a son or a daughter of the Most High God. And I don't know about you, but that's good enough for me. And fresh hope can emerge today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And I believe we have an opportunity now, an invitation to respond to this resurrection power and hope by standing together and let's worship the Lord and let's pour out our praise to him in Jesus name because we have hope for humanity.
Let's give God a shout of praise in the house of the Lord. There is resurrection power in this place in the name of Jesus Christ. And I want to prophesy a few things here over here on this side. There are some people here, you are struggling with depression and suicidal thoughts. And the Spirit of the living God is telling you, you will live and not die in the name of Jesus Christ. I break it off your life in the name of Jesus. And there is a family up here. I can't identify you specifically. There's a family, there's a marriage on the rocks. The wife, you're exhausted. I can see you in the spirit, spiritually, mentally, and physically exhausted. Do not give up on your marriage. There is resurrection power coming to your marriage today. In the name of Jesus Christ, and your husband will stop abdicating his responsibilities and he will lead his home and you will testify from this very platform of God's restorative power in your marriage in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare it in Jesus' name. In this people, in these transepts, some of you it's been years, some it's been more recently. You're not sleeping at night. You're being troubled and tormented. Nightmares and bad dreams. Our God does not sleep or slumber. He is awake and He is alert. And those are broken and banished off your life in the name of Jesus Christ. It is well with your soul. You will sleep well tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. And there are people here. You've given up. You know that God has called you. You've given up. Get back in the fight. Wake up. Arise. Arise. In the name of Jesus Christ. Life has been hard. It's been difficult. There's been challenges. But I'm here to tell you, fulfill your calling in Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Fulfill your calling. Rise up. Be all that God has called you to be. Get back in that fight. Galatians 6 verse 9 is so, so clear. Do not be weary in doing good for in due season you will bear a harvest if you retain your hope every one of us we're alive in Jesus because of that resurrection power what was dead is now alive in the name of Jesus Christ so we are going to go out and we are going to praise God again are we ready to get our praise shoes on and give him all the glory and all the honor Let's praise God. Come on, KT.
giving him praise. He is risen. Christ is alive. Resurrection power in the name of Jesus. Give him your glory. Give him your worship. Give him your praise. Give him your adoration. Give him everything that is due the name of Jesus. We have hope because of Jesus. You conquered death, hell, sin, and the grave. We love you. We worship you in this place. Take all the glory. Take all the honor. Take all the praise. Take all the adoration. And help us, Jesus, to have hope. Hope, hope, and hope. But Jesus Christ, you are Lord. You rule and you reign. For the glory of God, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Amen. I feel like we should get a praise party on in here. Whatever you guys say. Glory be to the Lord. Are we filled with fresh hope this morning? Amen. Carry that hope everywhere you go. In Jesus' name. Thank you. I do want to take a moment. Thank you again. I do want to take a moment this afternoon. We are so conscious that there are so many new people here in the life of the church. And as I mentioned in my sermon, please don't leave without seeing members of our welcome team. They're out in the uh, uh, patio area. They're here at the side. They're in our reception area. They would love to connect with you, pray with you, help you find your place with us in KT. Because we believe that you have just made a journey where you have turned back and you're now heading in the right direction with Jesus. So stay connected, do speak to people in our welcome team. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of your Resurrection Sunday, enjoy your bank holiday, and come back at six o'clock for our worship concert. God bless you, thank you for being with us. Take care, God bless.
is moving on the rocks Who's holding up the moon Who is peeling back the dogs With the burning light of noon Who is standing on the mound Who is on the earth below? Who is bigger than the heavens? And the lover of my soul. Sing that one time. Who is moving on the wall? Who is holding up the moon? With a burning light of noon Who is standing on the mountain Who is on the earth Oh, yeah, the God. 